I want to welcome everybody to this blog. I'm Tad Radzinski, speaker, educator, and expert in corporate responsibility and sustainable product design. Thank you all for attending. Uh, the series for November is going to be benchmarking and measurement, evaluating where you are, determining where you're going. And today's topic is uh, very timely. Uh, we're talking about meaningful metrics, vital data to benchmark your organization. And the reason I say this is timely is I actually had two calls this week with uh, different organizations that were struggling with uh, benchmarking and measuring performance of various sustainability metrics within their organization. And this is a common problem. There, there's uh, a lot of things you can measure, which we'll be talking about shortly. And it really gets complex with large organizations with many facilities and many locations. So uh, we will be talking about this uh, today, and then we will be having a webinar uh, later in the month where we'll be able to really delve into this topic and have people answer, ask questions and different things like that. So when we think about uh, benchmarking and measurement, bottom line is if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. This is a, a motto we've had here uh, for years, and uh, in order to really make changes to any system, you need to understand how it works. What are the inputs? What are the outputs? What is some of the data? And it's, uh, there's various things that get tracked in benchmarking and measurement. Things like raw materials, chemicals, water, energy, waste, office supplies, associated costs. It's a great, great way to understand what you're spending within your organization. And the important thing to note is with benchmarking and measurement, you can do this for uh, an individual. Uh, this is uh, something I have my students do all the time. I basically have them benchmark their lives where they measure their consumption of electricity, the gasoline they burn, uh, water consumption, the number of coffee cups they throw away every week. Or you can get as big and complex as looking at a very uh, complex manufacturing company with many locations and measuring all kinds of different parameters. So uh, when we, we measure, we collect data, and when we benchmark, we basically set up that data in a manner that we can normalize it to some factor. Maybe it's normalized to production, or if you're measuring something in a building, you know, maybe it's the number of employees or the number of occupants. And it allows us to track progress over time. And benchmarking and measurement can be as simple as using spreadsheets or as complex as using some type of software. And I can tell you, I have not seen really great softwares out there. Uh, there's a lot of uh, different companies that promote softwares, but they don't do everything. So um, some of the best systems I've seen have been uh, systems that have been developed <clears throat> by people that actually establish spreadsheets or different things like that. Other great thing about benchmarking and measurement, it allows you to set goals for your organization, and then you're able to compare your performance over time, which is really important, helps you measure and understand where you're going towards your corporate responsibility or sustainability goals. So it's important when you're setting up your measurement system, easiest things to measure are for sure impacts on the environment or the planet. So you can easily measure energy consumption, water consumption. Waste is pretty difficult, I will say that. A lot of companies are trying to measure waste and unfortunately Depending on how your organization is set up, you might not have the ability to, to weigh things or to get specific information on waste, so that's not always easy. Economics are another thing you need to measure. Uh, many companies need to understand where they're going, are they being profitable, what is their spend. You know, These are different things you can measure. And then on the people side or the social side, things you can measure there are training or different uh, aspects, and we'll talk more about that, but you know, really uh, the social side could be um, volunteerism, a lot of different things to look at. So one thing to remember when you're measuring, you have to take a look at your facility, your operation, your organization, and understand all inputs and outputs. To be truly sustainable and develop a really good corporate responsibility program, you need to know what are the inputs and outputs of your facility. And it's really important to remember, when you develop your benchmarking measurement, develop it Develop the system that is specific to your company. Okay, don't, you know, some people think you can just pull things off a shelf and one size fits all. That doesn't make sense. You really need to measure the things that are most important, most material to your corporate responsibility program and critical to how you do business no matter what you do. And this is just an example of a way you can look at 
uh, your operation. You can basically draw a box around your building and look at everything that comes in. Uh, and that could be energy, it could be people, it could be um, materials, chemicals, and then what comes out. And this is a really good way to get a visual understanding of things you should probably be measuring by creating these material flow or process maps. So key, key impacts to consider, like I said, for the environmental side, really straightforward. Uh, it could be impacts to air, water, waste, social uh, aspects. Again, on the social side, that's not always very clear to people, but like I said, measuring things like training hours, uh, your volunteer time, uh, basically uh, maybe uh, outreach to the community, phil philanthropic donations, uh, you know, time donations, all kinds of different things can be measured on the social side. That's an area where there's a lot of development happening, and that's something we'll be talking about in future blogs. How can we really measure and understand impacts on the social side or to, the, to people? And uh, that's a developing science and technology. Uh, global warming, fossil fuel depletion. The great thing about benchmarking is once you do it, you can actually use it for reporting. If you have to report to, say, Dow Jones Sustainability Index, or you have to report to uh, the Carbon Disclosure Project, or you have regulatory requirements, you know, we, there will be a time when people are going to have to start reporting their carbon footprint to EPA or other, other uh, entities. Uh, some governments around the world actually have you report your carbon footprint data. And resource consumption is another good thing to, to consider when you're developing your benchmarking metrics. So I just want to thank everybody for joining today. Uh, next week, the blog will be engaging and understanding your supply chain. Think about it. If you're doing benchmarking and measurement, it's really uh, straightforward on how you measure everything you do. But how do you get your suppliers to start thinking about this? How do you get your suppliers to start measuring and providing you data so you can understand what some of the impacts are because of what you're doing. So on Tuesday, November 26, we're going to take a deeper dive into this topic. Uh, we're going to learn strategies to help you properly organize, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and use your benchmarking data. And the great thing about when we do the live videos, we just had a webinar uh, recently. We had a lot of people on there, a lot of great questions. We can definitely answer your questions directly. So please continue to subscribe to my blog and get to get emails about these uh, different uh, things we're providing. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the future. Keep the questions coming as well. They're really helpful uh, to help me tailor these series. This series, there was a lot of questions on this, and this is why we created this series. So thank you, and I look forward to talking to you in the future.